and uh, it was further found that uh, when you uh, lower the temperature to sufficiently low uh, regime, such as uh, below just a couple of hundred millikelvin, this two-dimensional electron gas become, becomes actually superconducting. So one important property of this interfacial uh, superconductor is that you can actually tune the superconductivity by utilizing a very simple geometry because the strontium, tantalum, tant strontium titanium oxide or STL has a, has a really large dilute constant. You can simply utilize a uh, gate, uh, back gate geometry, basically applying an electric field across the thickness of your sample. Then you can tune the superconductivity just using an electric field. So showing in this plot is a tunable superconductivity by this electric field, by the electric field uh, that uh, found for this uh, uh, interfacial superconductivity. So uh, as an, another example for this interfacial system is that turns out that the spin orbit coupling can be uh, can be also tuned, and and because of this property, one can observe. Uh, a spin to charge conversion phenomenon utilizing basically a, for example, here is a, a spin pumping, uh, spin pumping method, basically pumping a pure spin current into the system. And because of the spin orbital coupling, this spin current can be converted into a charge current and then measure as a basically voltage. So, so there are actually quite uh, diverse phenomenon are found in this interfacial system. Uh, as I just talked about, the gate tunable superconductivity as well as uh, tunable spin orbit coupling. There's actually also signatures of magnetism. So, so the discovery of this interfacial uh, oxide in the uh, system actually opens a new field of research uh, after its discovery. So the, the materials uh, I will be talking about is potassium tantalum oxide. So this material is actually quite similar to strontium titanium oxide or STO. So both of the, these materials has a uh, ABO3 perovskite structure. And um, so I will be also growing another oxide uh, material on top of this KTO and to form a Interfacial uh, electron gas. So on the right is the is the top view along along the one 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 crystal axis. So uh, one uh, along this direction, the atoms, the tantalum uh, atoms, actually forms a uh, because of bit, uh, different layers, they form a buckled uh, honeycomb like uh, lattice. So as I just mentioned. Both KTO and STO uh, have some uh, interesting properties. However, there is a one distinct difference between these two because uh, tantalum uh, belongs to a 5D, uh, in the 5D element. So it has a, a much larger uh, spin orbit coupling. So because of this, the, the T2G manifold of the, uh, of, the, of the orbital is split by this large spin orbit coupling into a, a angular momentum of one half and three half uh, states. So this splitting is uh, about a factor of 10 larger than that in, uh, in STO system. So uh, besides that, uh, so a KTO also has a, a quite large uh, dilute constant. So for example, the dilute constant can, can increase to about 45 uh, hundred as you lower the temperature. So this property is also very similar to uh, STO. So uh, however, there is a one difference. So uh, in STO, people can actually dope the STO uh, so to form to, so that the material becomes conducting and uh, eventually the doped STO can be superconducting. But uh, it uh, wasn't, wasn't, was not observed in KTO that uh, when you dope uh, KTO, people 
uh, superconductivity cannot be uh, so far is not observed in the bulk STO. So this was the early uh, experiment on doped KTO. Even though you can get a metallic uh, metallic transfer of property, but uh, uh, no superconductivity was uh, reported. However, there was only one uh, report for uh, evidence for evidence of superconductivity uh, in KTO, which was done using a high liquid gating on the KTO001 surface. So uh, in this measurement, a quite large, a quite, quite large of gate, um, gate voltage was applied in as high as six volt. Uh, the resulting, the resulting uh, superconductivity actually was uh, quite weak was only about um, 50 millivolt. Uh, the critical field as well as the critical current was also uh, quite, um, quite weak. So uh, as I just mentioned, uh, I will be talking about the, the electron gas formed at uh, the oxide interfaces. So I, uh, in my uh, uh, experiment, uh, the the interface the interfacial system was formed by growing an oxide materials. The first example is uh, growing an European oxide on top of potassium cation ox uh, oxide. So using uh, MB's uh, method. So this uh, grows grows uh, this growth procedure involves a annealing of KTO substrate in vacuum, and then deposit European. In also in high vacuum because the European can absorb uh, uh, oxygen quite easily. So in the in the first couple of layers, European can absorb oxygen from KTO and it forms oxygen vacancies at the interface. Uh, after that, we deliver uh, oxygen into the chamber. Eventually, the European uh, layer will form will be grown as European oxide. So another oxide material which five is a uh, less than aluminum oxide just like the LL STO. So this was done by using PLD growth. So in both cases uh, we were able to uh, get a uh, two gag two dimensional electron gas at the interface. So uh, showing on this slide is the the TM image showing showing the interface uh, interfacial region for the EU of KTO and the LL KTO cases. So for the EUO KTO, the European oxide actually forms a uh, polycrystalline uh, structure, while for LAO, uh, it, it is um, uh, amorphous. So basically, you cannot absorb any uh, ordered atom uh, for LAO. Uh, but uh, uh, in both cases, as I, as I will show you in a bit, that uh, we can obtain a, two, um, a metallic uh, interface. interface. So we further uh, uh, studied the, the, the interfacial chemical compositions, and we found that uh, in the interfacial region, indeed, there is an oxygen uh, vacancies. So this, these are the light image for the STEM uh, characterization. The, the, here, the peak position re represents, or the blue one represents the uh, oxygen. Near the interface, the oxygen uh, is, uh, has a lower intensity, meaning there are oxygen vacancies. We also found that um, near the interface region, there, are some, there is some chemical substitution. Basically, the potassium was uh, sub substituted by europium, as uh, observed in this uh, peak. So here I'm showing you the uh, transport measurement uh, on the uh, EUO KTO system. The, the, the green data points is in the measurement on EUO KTO 111. So here 111 refers to the, the surface crystalline orientation. Basically we can grow the oxide, the EUO oxide layer on top of KTO. And the KTO can be, the surface of KTO can have a uh, different uh, uh, crystal orientations. So we investigated the 111 as well as 001, uh, the surface. So in both cases, we can get a metallic, uh, in a, uh, metallic behavior. 
as shown in this slide. So uh, one, one more uh, introduction about the, the 111 surface. So before uh, this work, people actually have started the, started the, the electronic structure formed at the KTO 111 surface. So in this work, they use the artist measurement and they clip the, clip the surface and clear surface and they shine a high energy X-ray to form a two gap. Uh, just at the 111 surface. It turns out that, as I just as I talked about earlier, the honeycomb uh, lattice, uh, the bulk of honeycomb lattice actually is uh, respected uh, in the in the measured in the measured uh, ele uh, electronic structure. For example, there is a, a six-fold symmetry observed in the artist measurement, uh, which is quite similar to. Uh, we're quite close to the theoretical calcul calculations. So, and, uh, and the people also found that uh, because, of, because of the quantum confinement, uh, the, the electronic band is, uh, also, uh, also has some, uh, some uh, sub-bands basically uh, introduced by the quantum confinement. So, uh, as I just uh, mentioned earlier, we were able to obtain a uh, metallic interface. Uh, as we uh, lower the temperature further, surprisingly, we found that the, the two deck becomes superconducting and the, the TC becomes as high as 2.2 Kelvin, uh, which is uh, about one order of magnitude higher than the, the widely studied uh, AOL STL system, which was only about 200 millik. So showing uh, in this for in this figure, uh, four, uh, four different uh, EU or KTO 111 samples. So all of them are grown on KTO 111 surface. The difference is that they have different um, uh, carrier densities, carrier densities, and uh, the TC were also uh, are also different. So then the natural question is, uh, does this uh, uh, superconductivity have anything to do with the metallic uh, no, the oxide layer used for uh, for this two dead. So on the left is the EU or KTO, on the right is LAO KTO. So we found that uh, in LAO KTO uh, one 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 uh, interface, the superconductivity is also formed. So this means uh, the superconductivity we observe uh, in the KTO surface does not depend on the the, the oxide over layer. Over there, so essentially, people can use different oxide layers as long as a two deck is formed. So one uh, one very surprising result is that this superconductivity has a very strong crystalline orientation dependence. For example, so uh, in both of these cases, the superconductivity can be observed in the KTO KTO one 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 surface. However. When we grow the oxide layers, including both EUO and KTO, on KTO001 surface, there's no superconductivity. And we measured the transport down to as low as 25 millikelvin. And uh, the, there's no basically no observable, observable transition. So this is a quite striking result uh, in comparison to the uh, AOL STO. So far for LAO STO, people can observe uh, superconductivity along all crystalline orientations. And, uh, and the TC is also was quite similar for different uh, uh, surfaces. So then we further uh, uh, characterized the, the superconductivity. So shown here is the magnetic transport with the magnetic field applied along the out plan and the in plan, uh, in plan direction. So we see that the critical field is quite, dif quite different, as high as a factor of 10 difference between the out plan and the in plan um, geometry. So this is a, a natural consequence of the two, dimension, two dimensionality of the superconductivity because, uh, because we, uh, from this measurement, we can determine the Landau Hilbert uh, to, uh, lambda uh, lift gates, 
uh, now give a coherence lens, G of G of coherence lens, which is about 13 nanometers. While from the measurement, same measurement, we can determine the thickness, which is about five nanometers. That is smaller than the geo coherence lens. So this is uh, basically uh, a confirmation of the two, two dimensionality of this student activity. We also found that uh, this two D superconductivity can be uh, can be uh, can be driven into a a semi insulate behavior by a magnetic field. So basically, uh, there is a critical magnetic field, uh, and uh, at this magnetic field, when you do a uh, when you do a temperature dependence, uh, the temperature de dependence is a uh, Relatively weak. When you uh, apply a higher magnetic field, the RFC shows a semi insulating behavior, while for a lower, while you apply a lower magnetic field, it is showing a basically metallic or superconducting behavior. Uh, this is this point is also basically the crossing point for the uh, for the uh, MR measurement. So also uh, within uh, also characterize the uh, the critical current. A behavior. So from this measurement, we can also determine whether there is a, a BKT transition because BKT transition should be uh, expected for a 2D uh, superconductor. So in this measurement, we measure the uh, voltage versus current at the different temperatures. As we gradually uh, increase the temperature, the slope for the V, uh, for the v versus I uh, decreases and the the red line corresponds to the corresponds to the I cube dependence of the voltage, which is the which is the, the transition point for BKT temperature uh, transition. So from this measurement, we found that the the T BKT is very close to uh, the temperature where the where the uh, resistance of the system becomes zero. So another uh, interesting property from this uh, system is that we found that the, the impact transport can be uh, anisotropic. So showing uh, on this slide is the measurement is uh, covered by in the two different uh, imprint crystal axes. One of them is along one minus one zero. Another one is along one one minus two. So direction. So in both cases, as we gradually lower the temperature, initially in the normal state, the resistance between these two uh, equations are quite similar. However, as we gradually lower the temperature and uh, lower the temperature, there is a spontaneous uh, formation of the anisotropic phase, which we use just use a splice phase to describe this phenomenon. Uh, describe this uh, phenomenon logically. So in this uh, region. The transport along these two implant crystal axes are quite different. Uh, however, as we gradually lower the temperature further, eventually at a sufficient low temperature, the, the superconductivity is formed along or current along both directions. So this sample is uh, uh, different than the, the one I showed you earlier in that this sample has a, a lower carrier densities as well as much higher uh, mobilities than the previous samples. And we found that uh, this uh, stripe phase can be uh, driven or suppressed by applying a magnetic field. For example, if we uh, increase magnetic field, uh, initially the superconductivity is suppressed, uh, but after that we see a, a anisotropic uh, behavior in the transport just like what we uh, saw in the R versus T measurement. Uh, as we apply magnetic field further, eventually um, the system become, becomes uh, normal and the anisotropic behavior is also um, suppressed. So actually we found that uh, this uh, anisotropic behavior uh, in most of the samples. And, um, and uh, showing here is the the mag uh, basically magnetic field dependence measurement. As we apply magnetic field, the transport difference can be observed near the critical field. 
So for uh, for these different uh, for these different um, samples, the difference is the mobility. As we uh, as the samples mobility decreases, it seems turns out that the transport and authority also becomes weaker. So this uh, is uh, one of the uh, observation of how the uh, this transport and, uh, and authority can be uh, dependent on the sample property. So uh, following uh, following up this uh, our work, there was uh, a some there was some theoretical uh, consideration uh, theoretical work trying to understand the uh, the anisotropy in this one 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 surface. So one of them is uh, a calculation using K dot P method, and they found that there is actually a difference along the one minus one and one one minus two direction in terms of the uh, spin susceptibility. So they found that along this one minus one zero direction, uh, the, the spin susceptibility has a peak at a certain wave vector. And this uh, peak could, could actually stabilize a spin density wave. And this could uh, produce a transport uh, anisotropy that we observed uh, in the experiment. So with that, I would like to summarize uh, summarize the, the result for the superconductivity at the KTO uh, interface. So basically, we found that uh, for this KTO uh, system, uh, the superconductivity uh, the T of the TC of the superconductivity can be uh, quite high, as high as 2.2 Kelvin. Uh, that is uh, about one order of magnitude higher than the LLSTO system. And we found that this the superconductivity shows crystalline orientation dependence. Basically, the superconductivity uh, is uh, not absorbed along 001 direction, but it can only be absorbed along 111 direction. And following our work, people also studied the, you know, there's another crystal or crystalline orientation, which is 110. And the people found that uh, uh, on that surface, superconducti superconductivity can also uh, emerge. However, the TC is about half of this, uh, of the TC along 111 direction. Uh, and lastly, we found that there is also an implant symmetry broken uh, in this system. So there are still some open questions. The first one is, uh, uh, what's the mechanism for this uh, superconductivity and the drive phase? So does the uh, distinct electronic structure, such including the strong spin orbit coupling, play, play a role in this uh, phenomenon? So then uh, also the next question is, uh, what, uh, what is the pairing symmetry? Would there are any uh, unconventional pairing uh, in this uh, pairing symmetry in this uh, system? So uh, with that, I will be continuing to uh, discuss the the second part uh, of, uh, of this talk, which is uh, uh, about the electric field control of magnetic spin current in chromium 3 So chromium 3 is a, a classical uh, antiferro magnet. And uh, in recent years, people found that uh, antiferro magnets are actually quite promise, promising in the application of uh, spintronics. So uh, showing on this slide are two examples of how to uh, utilize antiferro magnets uh, for, the, for spintronics. So the first one is iron rhodium, which is a metallic uh, antiferro magnet. So uh, for, this, uh, for this material, the, the, there is a transition from high temperature ferro magnet into a low temperature antiferro magnet. So people basically utilized a field cooling method to control the orientation of the neo axis, neo axis, and after that people use a a uh, anisotropic magnetic resistance or AMR, which is a transport method to to read out the different um, orientation of the neo axis in the uh, in the antiferromagnetic state because this antiferromagnet, as I said, is a metallic. Is metallic. So showing uh, in the button is another, another example. 
uh, in copper melting arsenide. So this is also a metallic antiferro magnet. magnet. So people found that one can use a spin orbit coupling, basically using spin orbit torque to switch the, the near axis. And after that, people can read out the different orientation of the near axis using still the AMI method. However, in both cases, the, the, the antiferro magnets have to be metallic. Otherwise, you cannot uh, use the AMI method to read out the near axis. Uh, so in um, so in actual, so in, in reality, there are quite a more, basically there are much more materials uh, that is antiferro magnet, which is also insulate. Uh, insulated. So there are basically there are there are more insulating antiferromagnets, much more than metallic antiferromagnets. So for that, uh, one needs to have a, another a different method to detect the near axis. So shown on this slide is a a basically illustration of, of a spin seatbelt effect. So basically, this method can work in. Um, in insulating um, magnetic, magnetic materials. So basically you can, you don't have to apply an electric current because it's uh, an insulating. However, you can apply a, a heat gradient because heat can excite magnons and the magnons can propagate along the heat gradient towards the, towards the interface. At the interface, these magnons can be actually converted into a spin current, and this spin current can can further flow into a metallic uh, heavy metal. So this uh, during this process, the spin current can be actually detected as a voltage using the basically the inverse spin Hall effect because of the large spin orbit coupling in this heavy metal. So uh, this spin C effect. Uh, actually was uh, uh, observed in a quite diverse magnetic system. So people can uh, measure a spin uh, signal in, in ferromagnet or EX platinum system. Uh, Antiferromagnet such as magnet diphoride platinum, as well as uh, in some um, uh, frustrate magnet such as gadolinium gallium gallium GTG. So this is because uh, the the spin seatbelt effect only doesn't require a long range magnet ordering. And uh, as long as you have a heat uh, thermal excitation of magnons, and uh, then you can actually observe the, the spin transport. So uh, this is the device uh, geometry that I will be using for, for the measurement in chromium tow stream. So basically we use a nano fabrication uh, technique to uh, to grow a, a, a to basically integrate a heat wire a heater into onto the sample. So this uh, basically we apply a heat current on the top layer, which can create a a heat a heat current in the vortical direction. As a result, there is a temperature gradient along this vortical direction, and uh, then we can measure measure. The, the magnons propagate towards uh, this interface, which is uh, basically measured as a uh, as a volt charge, basically a voltage. Here we use typically use um, uh, platinum as the heavy metal. So uh, this is uh, a basically uh, a, a description about the the chromium two two three, which has uh, some special uh, battery structure. So the chromium two three I'm interested in is uh, uh, has uh, is uh, the zero 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 one orientation. So we can grow this uh, this material onto a aluminum oxide or sapphire substrate. So one interesting property is that the the chromium two three the two unicell basically two um, anti parallel spin lattices. Uh, during growth, they are also grown uh, as pairs. Basically, uh, the spin down and the spin up are grown together. 
So as, as a, a result of this property, even though the, the surface roughness can be, uh, is not atomic, is a relatively high and not an atomic flat, but uh, the, the top and the bottom surface are always have, always have the opposite, opposite uh, spin orientations. For example, here on the top surface, the spins are always point, pointing up in opposite to the spin orientation at the bottom. So uh, in, the, in the experiment, uh, we fabricate the device that have actually can detect both the top and the bottom surface. As we show in this uh, geometry, we have two uh, platinum layer on both the bottom and top surface. And these two platinum, two platinum layer can be used as a detection to detect the spin current. We can also actually use these two platinum layer as the uh, electrodes to apply a electrical field. Uh, which I will show you in a bit that this electric field can be used to control the neural axis. So this is the measurement measurement result. So uh, we apply a heat current into the heat wire, and then we apply a magnetic field. So as we rotate the magnetic field, we can see a response of the voltage measured in the platinum layer. As we increase uh, the angle of the magnetic field, there is a basically angular dependence. Depending on the, the field strength, this amplitude uh, decreases as you go to lower field. And we found that this angular dependence can be uh, modeled, quite, modeled quite precisely using micromagnetic simulation. And we found that uh, during this rotation, the, there is a gradual rotation of the neural axis. Uh, across the thickness of chromosome string. So this is because of the, the nature of the coupling strength is layered coupled. So we found that uh, as we increase the magnetic field further, so shown here is a six tesla, as we increase the magnetic field further to up to nine tesla, a clear difference um, is observed. For example, showing on this slide, as we, Rotated magnetic field in the clockwise direction, we see the behavior in as shown in the red data points. However, once we rotate back, we see a hysteretic behavior. Basically, the, the response is, um, is different than the, the, the clockwise rotation. And we found that this behavior can also be uh, modeled using the micromagnetic relation. And we found that this is because of a spin flop transition. And uh, this 90 uh, field is higher than the spin flop transition field. So at, because, of, because of this, there's a uh, hysteretic uh, behavior in the behavior of um, the near axis in, res in response to the uh, rotation of the magnetic field. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have in our device, we can measure uh, both the both the uh, bottom and the top surface. And we found that indeed, uh, these two surfaces have different uh, behaviors. So, so in the top panel is the measurement at the top surface, while the bottom, bottom panel showing measurement at the bottom surface. As you can see, the angular dependence of the, uh, the spin current is quite um, different. So for example, this maximum occurs at a close at a field angle close to 180 degree, while this on the top surface, the maximum occurs at um, uh, an angle um, close to zero degree. So then uh, we found that this difference also uh, persists, also exists at a field uh, above the speed of transition. For example, as you can see, the, the red, the blue curve shown here has a maximum near uh, 180, while it is opposite for the bottom uh, measure, for the measurement at the bottom surface. So, so this is also understood from, from our simulation because, because this, this bottom and the top surface belongs to the two different magnetic sublattes. And as I described to you earlier, these two magnetic sublattes are pointing opposite to each other and they have different um, orientation in response to the magnetic field. 
So then we need to uh, verify if, whether this is true because we can actually uh, manipulate the spin orientation such that initially the two subplates MA and MB can be, uh, can be uh, configured to the opposite direction. So for this measurement, uh, we, uh, we apply a larger magnetic field not higher than the spin flop condition field. And then we rotate the magnetic field at 180 degree. And further, we, then we reduce the field. After this operation, the magnetic subplates orientation of these two, uh, the orientation of these two magnetic subplates can be, uh, can be manipulated such that they point, pointing, they are pointing opposite than the original configuration. After, after doing this operation, we can still measure the measurement. So as you can see, before the op uh, operation, we have this polarity for the top and the bottom. But after the reorientation, we see that the polarity is switched. The top one can be configured, can uh, show this behavior, while the bottom one becomes this polarity. So this means indeed we are manipulating the two magnetic subplates, and uh, and that we are indeed measuring the uh, these two magnetic subplates individually from this um, top and the bottom surfaces. So it turns out that Chromium twelve three is also interested in terms uh, in that it has a magnetic magnetic electric coupling. So this is because uh, because the the two subplates uh, can two magnetic subplates for uh, for the for the chromium ion. Uh, once once a electric field is applied along the c axis, the the chromium ion can move relative to the to the neighboring neighboring uh, oxygen triangles, and because of this movement, uh, this breaks the 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 inversion symmetry between these two sublattices. As a result, there's a net magnetization induced by this electric field. So therefore, this, uh, this effect is also called magnetic electric coupling. And the people found that uh, one can apply simultaneously a, a electric field and a magnetic field. By different uh, configuration, one can, one can tune these two, uh, the tune the orientation of the of the uh, magnetic subplates in chromium twelve three. So then uh, we, uh, because we uh, in our measurement we can apply magnetic field that is close to the spin flop transition uh, point. So that means the measurement can be very sensitive. So that we apply magnetic field of one point five, eight point five tesla. So on the verge of spin flop transition. And then we apply an electric field without changing the magnetic field. We found that as we apply a, a, a negative uh, electric field of negative 15 volt, you can see that the, this partial transition can be complete, completely suppressed without, without changing the magnetic field. While when we apply a positive, uh, positive 15 volt, I, we can see a fully uh, hysterical behavior. Uh, so this is a measurement is very similar to the measurement uh, at higher magnetic field. But here, we do not need to change the magnetic field. We just need to apply a, a, a gate voltage. So then we can further uh, do a close measurement uh, near, the, near the transition. So shown here is the, the measurement near the uh, spin flop transition as function of field angle. So as we apply different gate voltages, the transition occurs at a different field angles. So from this measurement, we can see that this uh, transition could be uh, could be driven by purely using a, a electric field. So we basically uh, apply that field at a fi at a fi fixed field angle, and then we speak the sweep the, um, the gate voltage. As we increase the gate voltage, we can see a transition from uh, transition in this spin feedback signal. So from negative 150 to zero. So this demonstrates that we can control the, the maximum spin current uh, by just using a gate voltage uh, in this uh, antiferromagnet. 
So uh, this concludes uh, my uh, second part. So I showed you that the specific uh, effect can sense individual sublattice magnetization in antiferromagnet. And uh, we can also control the polarization of the magnetic spin current uh, with an electric field via the uh, magnetic electric coupling. Here the, here the signal, uh, this response because of the, uh, the measurement is utilizing the spin wall spin hall effect. So this is due to, as I uh, uh, introduced earlier for the spin effect is just due to the, the change in the, the, near, the orientation of the near axis. And as a, as a result, the polarization of the magnetron changes, and then uh, we see a change in the specific uh, response. So with that, I'd like to thank uh, all my uh, collabor collaborators along uh, from different in, uh, institutions. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention. All right, thank you very much for uh, telling us uh two interesting stories about um, outside the material systems, one regarding the superconductivity and the other one about the, the magnetism. Um, any questions from the audience? Right, uh, Walter. Yes, uh, very nice talk. So I wanna go back to the first part and ask a question about that. So the, what is the relation between the superconducting temperature and the, I guess BKT stands for Berezinsky Costellus Tower slides. Mm -hmm. And that has, as far as I remember, something to do with vortices and anti-vortices or an Correct. spin model. But how does that relate to the superconductivity in your case? So here, so here uh, uh, this, uh, in this measurement, we tried to, uh, to investigate with the, this superconductivity is two-dimensional. So in two-dimensional, um, you can expect a BKT transition because of the, the vortex and vortex uh, unbinding as you inc gradually increase the temperature. And uh, at this transition, you can see a, you can see a, a special dependence of voltage on current, which is I cube dependence. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, we basically measured this VI at different temperatures, and we found that the, the dependence of voltage on current has uh, indeed shows a cubic dependence near the temperature where, where the resistance is zero. Mm -hmm. okay. So this basically, this measurement uh, tells us that uh, this superconductivity is uh, two-dimensional. Right, but does it have something to do with superconducting vortices, like in a type two superconductor then, or? So it's a, yes, it is due to the, it is, in this case. it is due to the vortex uh, unbinding, vortex and, and, uh, and the anti-vortex unbinding process. And uh, during, in this process, there's a uh, uh, I, I cube polynomial mm -hmm. dependence for the voltage. Okay. Thank you. Well, you listed a bunch of other questions that were unresolved. So I guess it's pointless to, for me to ask. <laughs> My questions were, you know, what is the order parameter? And what right. Do you know about? Is this like conventional superconductivity due to electron phonon interaction? I, I don't know if your measurements shed any light on that, but are there other measurements that give any information on that? Uh, so far, we are still uh, trying to understand uh, what, are the, what is the possible uh, pairing mechanism in this system. So uh, as I uh, described earlier, so KTO has a very similar property as uh, STO. For STO, people have, have proposed several different uh, mechanisms, uh, including the, 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 the TO phonon, soft phonon, uh, which is responsible for the quite uh, paroelectric of- Yes. Mm -hmm large electric behavior. So it is also, it is possible that those uh, mechanisms could be applied uh, to this system. Hmm. Thank you, yeah. Okay, uh, any other questions? All 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So you made a. So I have a question. So uh, you made a, a comparison at the beginning uh, in, uh, between the uh, the KTO system and the LAO STO. And uh, so the LAO STO is known for uh, the superconductive uh, superconductivity and, and also for the uh, magnetism. And uh, you know, based on some growth conditions, uh, there is even coexistence of both superconductivity and the magnetism. Uh, do you see any uh, sign of uh, magnetism in the in the KTO system? Uh, so far, in uh, in this uh, in our transport measurement, we Cannot cannot tell whether there is a coexisting uh, of magnetism and superconductivity. So yeah, this is a, a direction we would like to explore. Uh -huh. We uh, we actually so this material the KTO system was originally uh, sort of to have magnetism because uh, the EU well, you know European oxide is a magnetic material. And uh, uh, my collaborators wanted to study whether the induced two deck has any magnetism uh, just from the from because of the EU itself is a, is a, is magnetic. So they tried they did some measurement on EU KTO 001, and there was a paper published in 2018 uh, suggesting that there's some um, magnetism in the in two gag, but uh, uh, I think there should be more measurement or more direct measurement to to tell whether the magnetism in KTO system is uh, is whether it is present present. Yeah. Right. So so yeah. So I I was going to say that uh, like the European oxide. Uh, uh, is magnetic, uh, right? The Curie temperature is like uh, 68 or Kelvin. Correct. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, given you know whether there is a magnetic magnetic proximity effect, will make the KTO also you know become magnetic, uh, and uh, also uh, due to the strong spin of the coupling, right? As you mentioned, that the interface, uh, and um, there is likely to be some interfacial dialogue scheme array interaction. So there was, in, uh, I can see, uh, I envision many uh, interesting, uh, you know, interplay between the magnetism and uh, and the spin of the coupling, and the symmetry breaking at this interface. Right. So so this KTO system actually is, uh, has more, maybe more potential in uh, spintronics application. Uh, we expect the much larger spin optical coupling from, yeah, just from the tension uh, heavier, uh, uh, heavier element. Well, I see, uh, Sidash, you have a question? Uh, yes, I had a question, uh, but uh, maybe I can email it to you rather than like sending, like talking here, it may be a bit longer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the audience? I have a question regarding the origin of this uh, two deck. Maybe mm. you know. Maybe you mentioned this. Is it similar to LAS, LASTO, You know, due to the polar catastrophe. So, uh, so for this system, we think it is more of a uh, oxygen oxygen vacancy oh. near the KTO interface. So we found that so here. So for both European oxide and LAO. Uh, we can get a two gag. Uh, specifically for LAO, we have a we found that it is formed as a, a amorphous layer, amorphous layer. So then, uh, we don't think the polar catastrophe here plays an important role for LAO KTO uh, cases. Hmm. And uh, actually, we found in our uh, STAM image, we found that there is a clear evidence of oxygen vacancy. Near the interface. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, mm. while we're talking about this kind of thing, is there also any signs of interdiffusion of the, you know, say the lanthanum ions and the potassium ions and the 
tantalum and the titanium can they interdiffuse between the two layers mm -hmm. yes that being so we found uh, for example here uh, panel d uh this uh red arrow indicates the uh, indicates the 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 potassium site and near the interface so this is a near the interface region as we grow uh, go along this arrow near the interface region the potassium side shows higher intensity indicating that they are replaced by europium which is uh, has some sub substitution of europium uh, into the potassium side very interesting i mean we which when so some years ago we studied actually quite in detail with the group the LAO STO interface electron gas formation and there are all kinds of complications from interdiffusion from oxygen vacancies and so on that all play mm -hmm. a role actually it's not just this whole catastrophe but this is interesting you now here with this europium which is a magnetic semiconductor and the F electrons and all of that it's certainly a quite different interesting system mm -hmm. yes. All right, uh, any other uh, questions from the audience? Right. If that's not the case, let's thank our speaker again. Um, and I will stop the recording and we can uh, continue to have a you know, informal discussion. <laughs>